guys i'm in the forest again please tell me off um no but i kind of wanted to do this today a little chit chat i've been reading a lot of books so hopefully this content is worth it or it's like thought provoking that's the aim of doing these videos right now i'm at literally the best viewpoint ever in my area ow oh oh my god it's like meadows on meadows i'll spin the camera around. Okay, so the context of this video is a lot to do with a mixture of empathy, feeling seen and energy. So this video is based on the mistake I have been making most of my life and I wondered why I wasn't really connecting to people or understanding their needs and desires. Hang on, we got an aeroplane. Then I figured out I came across inward versus outward energy what areas are you being needy or what areas that do you need to withdraw and detach from and let go i think the biggest lesson i've learned recently is letting go and trusting i know that sounds so vague like oh just let go of your desires or let go of what you want but it's so true and what i mean by that is when you want something um, you put a high importance on it this could be anything this could be these sneakers that you really wanted from JD Sports for about two months now and you're waiting for them to come out or this could be um, wanting something to work out, wanting a specific job, wanting a specific apartment, wanting a specific person, this could be anything and you attach to the outcome or something occurring in a certain way. Sometimes when we attach to the outcome of wanting something we can find that you find it a struggle to get to that point or sometimes it doesn't go our way sometimes it does but you know when you really want something it's harder to get it's like when you have i don't know back in primary school or back in secondary school when you had a crush on someone and you would think about them like oh my god oh this person's like the best like i i really vibe with them and you're going to school and and you can sense that the, the inward pull that you've been thinking and wanting and desiring something to work out that it doesn't allow your natural flow. And I think understanding how to access your natural flow is so important for attracting your desires um, and being your authentic self. Again, when you want something so badly, it, it sometimes repels because it's energetic. Everything is energetic. Um, and I used to be like, energy, what the energy like oh, that's a bit cuckoo but it's really not when you when you understand it in your own reality like look around you and think about who do you feel most natural around do you expect anything from them or um just look at the desires you want and how attached you are to them um and sometimes that can be the one thing stopping you from attracting those desires and obviously other things play a role i understand it's not just manifest this bring it into your life blah 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 blah. no a lot of things play a role but sometimes having the option to let go and let go of the outcome because sometimes something better can come along um so when you attach so much to the outcome it, it almost kind of stunts it it stops it energetically sometimes stops you in certain aspects of your life um so yeah, that's something to be aware of and just question to yourself, where am I stopping myself? What am I wanting to happen so badly that it's literally preventing it not from happening? Or what do I need to let go of? I used to think, these people are crazy saying, let go, let go and um, let go. I don't understand the word let go because that meant letting go completely. But I guess it's letting go of things happening in a certain way and just putting trust and faith in the universe if you want to say hashtag jesus take the will hashtag jesus take the will it's like that you know in certain stages of our life we can be inward or outward or a mixture of both you know how are you feeling day to day moves stuff like that um but inward is self-critical it's watching over everything you're saying try not to make mistakes really really observing yourself that's kind of inward energy inward is projecting your mind into the future um you know it's great we have an inward when you're inward you know you're always preparing for things but sometimes it can take you out of the present where you're your most authentic being you know you, i don't know remember the times where you feel quite relaxed 
and confident in yourself. And I think that's the moments where you feel most authentic, when you feel more connected. Inward is, um, it's always paid on that inner voice that's constantly criticising you and you know exactly what that voice is, don't kid me. You know that voice, yeah? Again, remember that sometimes that voice is formatted on past events that's happened in your life. Um, things, <clears throat> things that didn't go well and it's just this constant loop and yeah it's horrible like you don't act yourself when you feel inward you tend to feel more low you tend to feel in a much more low place and more restless and reactive and that's okay like we go inward sometimes like you can't be always outward and interacting with people and stuff like that it doesn't really work like that we have moods and it's important to understand the benefits of being inward too the problem with being inward all the time is you may hear people who you're interacting with but you don't hear them at the same time you may see them but you don't see them you don't see them and I think that's what I went wrong in my life is I was so tired on being insecure self-pity party I still am I'm not gonna lie like I am a self-pitier um yeah it's just <laughs> I do self-pity what you suffer with being inward and being in your insecurities and I know it's not as simple as that sometimes you feel trapped you don't see people as much as you could you miss certain things um, because that inner voice is criticizing you you know you're paying attention to how they're looking at you or how they're judging you um, but in in actual fact the, the things that you think they're judging you on is what your inner voice is saying to you and um, that's where it's better to observe your inner voice stand back go look at your thoughts what's been saying in your mind you know you'll hear that reoccurringly reoccurringly and it is a nightmare and if it gets to that point <clears throat> sometimes it's good to reach out for help and be like look I'm suffering with this reoccurring loop in my mind and I need help the thing is with being inwards too is you gain energy off of people's validations and opinions of you but that's not always that doesn't always work like that what you should feel is when you're most confident and comfortable and relaxed is a is a comforting presence of just relaxation within you it's comforting it's almost like your little friend inside of you that's what I call it it's like my little I, I pretend I have a third hand that's like tapping me here that's very weird but maybe I should carry on a hand with me but yeah you pretend you have a little third friend who's kind of like hugging you and that's what it would feel like a presence that just sits with you and it keeps your body still um because I know when I'm inward, I'm restless and anxious and I'm like, like, I can't focus at all. And it's, yeah, it is a nightmare a little bit, but there are ways to become more outward. The way that you can become more outward is through physical sensations, you know? Have you ever paid attention to your body while in a conversation or the soles of your feet? Being, being in touch with the physical. Okay, so when you eat food, pay attention to the sensations. What does it smell like? What does it taste like? What does it feel like? Um, become more, I like my hand actions, but become more physical, um, become more sensation aware. And I have, do you know what? I'm talking about this right now, but I do struggle with doing this myself. So I will practice with you. Um, comment below if you're practicing because I'll, I'll keep you up to date with my progress. When you are practicing this physical sensation, notice the thoughts trying to get back up to your head you'll feel it you'll feel it rush you'll feel you go and revert back to a different kind of state but observe it your mind will try to control you but this is where you can ground yourself back in physical sensations you know everyone's saying breathe yeah you can breathe um but soles of your feet oh what does my left calf feel like or <laughs> random stuff like that um, anything that takes your mind off it really and this will take a bit of practice um, if you are out of practice like myself but look we'll, we'll get there do you know when you're focused on your body's physical sensations and being in the moment it gives your body this relaxed energy and this is where your aura plays a role this is where your aura really comes into its nutri neutrality is that the word it's naturalness it comes into its natural present state and yeah that's the benefit of it and you can experience it try it out with family if you're around family or your friend um and you'll start to see things more and hear things more not ghosties but um just present life <laughs> when you focus on your heart space this area of you it subtly changes the difference in how people interact with you um, and people can notice this I've, I've seen little research of this so you can try it out 
you know especially okay this sounds really bad but you know when you're not sober um whether it's drink or whatever this is a really bad video if i'm talking about this but um when i'm on the alcoholics <laughs> i'm so much more loving and from my heart center space that i can easily interact with people and um that's a state you can access without drugs without being on the alcohol it's a chakra it's your heart space it's um if you want to visualize it green energy yeah it does make a difference this only works because people are unconsciously drawn to love find that if you're more inwards you lose energy quickly because it's directed on focusing on your thoughts and stuff like that it's, it's energy energy works energy goes where attention flows and that's true if you're paying attention to your thoughts all day you might find you get tired easily because it's something you're focusing on so i don't know i'll do this with you observe where your energy is going most days what i've noticed is every single person has a self-image about themselves you know whether it's whether they think they're lazy whether they think they're ambitious and you can mold that self-image but there are some things that um are genetic or things that are a part of your personality but on the same level is if you're telling yourself every day you're lazy and lazy or you can't get things done or you can't get out of bed you start to live that story because it's your self-image it's, it's what you it's how you go about your day it's who you are so i don't know have a little test uh, where you change something about what you think about yourself Oh my god i get up at seven o'clock in the morning every day i go to bed so early i get like an eight hours night's sleep and again you have a moment in your past where you've seen your self-image in action and that's why it becomes reoccurring as humans we're used to repetition we like the mundane most of our life is mundane i'm sorry to say you know we wake up brush our teeth conquer the day um work earn money have a little bits of fun in between but Usually there are mundane aspects and we are used, we are prone to repetition. So what is your repetition going to be about yourself? Self-image. Everyone has a self-image about them. What can you find out about other people's self-image? Who do they think they are? Ask them. Some people have a strong self-image. Some people's waver. Um, but yeah, figure that out. What helps change a self-image is committing to a vision. One that resonates with you. Um, if it doesn't resonate with you and it's someone else's vision or dream or aspirations you won't connect with it it has to be something that's connected with you um yeah but when you commit to a vision it motivates you more to i guess it, it changes your self-image over time that happened to my brother he was very very tired all the time and he committed to a vision of gym and this ideal self or ideal physical physically in shape ideal that he wanted to be in six to nine months later he has achieved that um, and is still going he's the most active person i know i don't know how that's happening but you can do it you've seen people morph like that what is this story that you tell about yourself um is it empowering is it degrading listen this is where you pay attention to your thoughts so when you become externally focused um you can hear people more and you're less likely to pay attention to your inner dialogue the one that's like nah, 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 um, you're less likely to pay attention to it at all self-consciousness sticks around when you stay self-focused um, and sometimes it's beneficial sometimes you find actual change from um, being self-focused and inwards and of course you do i'm inward a lot like i have parts of the day when i'm really inward not not focusing on other people and then days when i'm really outward and wanting to connect to people and hear other people and work with them but it just like wavers doesn't it so yeah don't be hard on yourself just notice when you're doing it your self-image is projecting your lifestyle that's very weird to hear but it does sometimes run like that and just be aware of does this lifestyle actually reflect some of your inclinations or things you want to do have a little rewind and have a little look i couldn't see myself as being able to talk to people i went through a stage where i was really inward um, and i was like i'm really awkward like i can't communicate with people and that was my self dialect and for so long i couldn't speak to people and i still struggle sometimes not gonna lie like that self dialogue is strong i don't know like i'm being honest my, my self dialogue is strong again some of the experiences you go through reaffirm who you believe you are so you know if you had a good positive experience it could change the way you once saw your self image i know it did for me like i've had um, recently anyway a couple of occasions where um, i've spoken and met a lot of people 
and it was completely fine and I was like what is my self dialogue telling like I don't know what's going on but that's one of the things I that's one of the things I struggle with anyway I guess letting go is one of the biggest lessons in this with anything again attachments to self-image or attachments to certain things that you desire um, or want isn't going to help it's only going to leave you feeling more stuck the misconception that detachment is disconnection from the emotions but it really means having non-attachment to people objects and desires and it's it's a state where you can truly manifest from with a constant surrender and reminding yourself of letting go because I know when I try and control something or when I try and hold on too tight to something it only makes it worse only makes me feel more insecure in my mind I guess there has to be a lot of trust that's needed with trusting the universe and trusting the outcomes of things really the the physical thing that you wanted might not occur but something better might be on the long along the way okay again in my favorite book the laws of human nature this is a chapter that really struck struck me Um, it says empathy is more than anything a state of mind the greatest danger you face is your general assumption that you really understand people and that you can quickly judge and categorize them instead you must begin with the assumption that you are ignorant and that you have a natural bias that will make you judge people incorrectly the people around you present a mask that suits their purposes you mistake that mask for reality let go of your tendency to make snap judgments open your mind to seeing people in a new light um, don't assume that you are similar or that you share your values each person you meet is like an undiscovered country with a very particular psychological chemistry that you'll carefully explore. The point in this is inward can lead to self-absorption and self-absorption is this place where you can feel stuck. When I realise, and when anyone realises that the deepest principle of human nature is for people to feel appreciated is when you can kind of see people in a different light and um, don't expect anything of others. This is where you become more physical orientated and more in the present and you'll start to notice things more notice more things about people and you won't be surprised when they suddenly snap or you won't be surprised when this really really emotional person doesn't care about your emotions or anything like that you won't assume it you'll be open to the malleability of people be flexible and other people's self-image and your own like i don't know